Hey, everybody. Look at that, Michael. <laughs> hey, guys. What's happening? That is awesome. What That's huge. That's crazy, man. Yeah, we, I just got this in a little while ago and yeah. just opened it up and was playing. That thing is man. pretty bad. Well, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Collection Wars. Um, thank you for joining us this Saturday. We have a really cool show today. Um, yes. We have a very special guest, Mr. John Francois Roland. Yeah. And um, obviously, for all you vintage fans, right, this is going to be another one of those vintage shows, which, I mean, we all love, right, Michael? Absolutely. It's really, really cool, and it's an honor to have him on the show. And I look forward to diving in on what it took to put this awesome vintage book uh, together. I know you had a lot of collaboration that we're going to get in with, like Mr. Gus Lopez and some others. But, man, what a fantastic book and, and a really cool dude. Absolutely. And, yeah, and we're going to talk to him about it. But, yeah, John Francois Roland put, put together a collection of, uh, you know, of, of images and information um uh, including you know his his personal collection uh into a book and basically it's it's the full Kenner right from 1978 to 1985 um there's a lot of information about that Kenner line so uh yeah i can't wait to to talk to him and check some of this stuff out absolutely a lot of really good reference for for you know people like me that's really into the vintage and and people that want to dive in and get into uh vintage it's very inform informative so absolutely and every time we have one of these vintage shows i for me you know i get into that you know that feeling i'm like i gotta go and i gotta go collect all my i'm just gonna get the figures <laughs> every time so i'm sure at the end of this i'm i'm gonna be going on ebay and all the collector groups trying to figure out yeah. where i'm going to start but yeah. um but yeah let's let's bring them on let's Michael. do it let's do yeah. it yeah hey how are you Hi. hello everyone hey buddy how are you john francois i'm good i'm very glad to be with you guys for yes. sure thank you so much for jumping on collection wars like i said um a lot of our viewers are collectors, right? And we all started somewhere. And 99% of us started with the vintage line, right? I think most Star Wars fans did, right? Yeah. yeah that's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I used to say my, my parents are the first fan in, uh, in, uh, in a family because they are the one who bring me to watch uh, Star Wars in the movie theater. And um, so they saw Star Wars first and they thought like, maybe it's the kind of movie that the kid will like. So they bring me to the theater and uh, yeah, it blew my mind. And that was just completely crazy about that film. And the second shock was when I discovered there was some Star Wars stories existing, but that was in spring 1979, actually, when my mom bought me my two first uh, action figures. It was a Stormtrooper and an R2-D2. And I yeah. thought, what? Action figures? From Star Wars, man, I couldn't believe it, you know. So it was just amazing for me to to discover that, and this is how it started, like basically. Yeah, and and how old were you? And and so where where are you located? Where where are you from? And how old were you when you first um, got introduced I, to Star Wars? I grown up in France in uh, Paris suburbs on the east side, and this is the kind of a uh, poster uh, we had in the in the metro station. So uh, that was quite uh, specific. And this one in particular, because I got it from Gary Kurtz archives many years ago. Wow. So I was so pleased to, to buy it in mint condition and uh, be part of my, my collection. But this is what we were seeing in October 1977 in, uh, in the streets of Paris, basically, uh, specifically for the, the, the underground, the metro station. This was a very specific size for, for, the, uh, for the metro. And this is what we used to see in, uh, in there at the time. And then in spring 79, uh, I started to, I was eight years old in 79. So, and six years old when I saw Star Wars uh, mm -hmm. and the theater. And this is how it started basically. That's very, wow. very cool. And that's cool. So, and, and so you were mentioning your parents saw it first. Yeah. And said, you know what? I think it's, it's time to, to show little John Francois Star Wars. <laughs> And what was your first impression when you first went to the movie theater? You know, you were what six years old? You said when you yeah, saw I was yeah. So then when I my my dad started to 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 explain to me what what was the movie about was just dark guys who have 
problem to breathe but tried to save a princess and was some nice golden droid well, well he said dro uh, not droid but robot at the time yeah. and this little can blue can droid and they have argument together and uh, they have space battle i said oh space battle no it could be interesting <laughs> let's go <laughs> yeah let's have let's have a look and then i remember that when we were arriving at the theater uh there were some picture of the the, the movie hanging on the wall you know and they start to explain at one point they were in uh in, they were in a dead star and uh there was some kind of creatures try to to grab look on, on on underneath and i start to get scared so and my dad said come on just like a, it's just a movie you know don't be scared before yeah. you watch it you know <laughs> oh that was real that stuff was for a kid that yeah. was like you know new shit that we've never seen before that was so amazing you know that was real so yeah. that was the, the funny part of it and the, the early souvenirs i have from star wars yeah so you you mentioned your first two action figures yeah. that your your mom bought you were yeah. these two now are these two the original ones or no these are ones that you found later no that's the uh, the, the stormtrooper and r2d2 are actually the original ones and the the the, the car that just for the picture, I put them back in the in the boxes because when I was a kid, I I love the toys. I play with them. I open every boxes, mm -hmm. but I also love the packaging, the design of it, the pictures, you know. And I kept the uh, the the card the what we call the, the card back now. And yeah. some of them I have to fight with my mom because my mom put them to the bin, <laughs> to the trash can, and I didn't want that. And I said, no, yeah. you don't don't do that because I love the picture on the box, you know. And yeah. Uh, yeah. All it figures. I love it. And, and look, at, look, look, look at look at look at uh, not to be put it on the beam. <laughs> All these years later, look at what has become of it. I and real, real quick, uh, John Francois, I, yeah. I would like to give a shout out to uh, David, our friend David. Yeah, um, Dave, who uh, initially reached out to me on Instagram. Super mm -hmm. cool Star Wars collector, and he was nice enough to send me a lot of, um, you know, some of his personal collection yeah. items, which is all with the 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 fran all the the different verbiage and yeah. the different card backs and what a super classy guy he was and and he's the one who put me in touch with you and, and it's yeah. really yeah. Cool. I want to say a, a big yeah. shout out to him thank you so oh, much oh yeah I really thanks to, to to David David is a really cool guy and yeah. uh, he's a great passionate collector for for many years no doubt and we always have good contact together so I, I really thank him to we keep in touch and uh, i'm so happy we now we can talk if we can talk today thanks to david <laughs> yes, yeah right. exactly yeah. um so jump around so just really quick before we kind of keep on going because i'll we'll yeah. probably i'll stop you and ask you questions because mm -hmm. again for us I'm, right like the american um collector that might not be familiar so mm -hmm. meccano was the the toy company that basically was producing these in france Yes, that's right. So basically, they were Kenner for us uh, at the time because they were part of the General Mills um, group. Mm -hmm. So there was a General Mills France, and there were several companies working for them. And Meccano was chosen to, uh, to to do the licensee and to sell the toys from Hong Kong or from uh, from England because all the uh, vehicles like uh, Darth Vader, Tie Fighter, Millennium Falcon, they were manufactured in the UK. Mm -hmm. And they were sent over Europe and France, Belgium, Germany, most of the time, because it was cheaper at the time to get the figures from Asia. But mm -hmm. most of the, um, the, the the spaceships or playset, they were actually manufactured in the UK for the whole Europe and also in Spain. But that's come a bit later on. Later. Gotcha. And and can you can you tell us? Uh, so how do you pronounce R2 and the Stormtroopers names? <laughs> so Stormtrooper was... Soldat Imperial, which is like Imperial soldier, if you can say so. And I ne I don't understand why, but R2 D2, they reverse it, they put D2 R2. Uh -huh. so I'd never know why. We have for Darth Vader, we also have a different name. It's called Dark Vador. But I believe because in French it was much easier to pronounce because Darth Vader in, in French it's not easy to pronounce. Yeah. So I believe they try to find something look dark but it's also dark it's an english word so but that's the way they, they choose and also uh from for star wars only uh, chewbacca become shiktaba which is i have no sense at all <laughs> i don't know why it's a lot easier to pronounce 
<laughs> you know what I always wonder, John Francois? I wonder yeah. how, like, as a kid, mm -hmm. you know, back then in the seventies. I mean, they were. How do you say that, Gabe? When they're 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 you know we're English here, and they're like if it's in France, they have the. How did they do that? Did they have the words coming across the screen? You know what I mean to translate All the subtitles. Yeah, yeah, the <laughs> subtitles. So I or wonder. You get the, both actually. You get the uh, the original uh, English version with subtitles, okay. and you have the other uh, other took of French voices actually. So it was the same in Germany, Spain, and Italy. Yeah, I know countries like uh, Holland, Sweden, and Denmark. They they keep it only with subtitles. They never uh, the, the voice or voice yeah. over took a voice or, or in in their own languages. And uh, in, in, when I saw it, Star Wars, and, and for the first time, it was uh, La Guerre des Étoiles. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it was all in French. And, and uh, I, man, many years later, when I started to learn English, I wanted to see it in, in English. And uh, since then, for about more than 30 years, I, I watched the movie in English oh. because I, I do That's enjoy it much more um, uh, to, to watch it in English, actually. So, yeah, of course. The well, I, directors in I grew up, I, yeah, I was, I was born and raised in Mexico. Oh. And in Mexico, when I was watching the movies, you same thing. You got to pick you either the dubbed one, where it was dubbed in Spanish from Spain, mm -hmm. like um, Castellano, and okay. then there's the subtitled one. And ever since I was little, I would always want to watch the subtitled one because yeah. I would memorize the English lines, you know. Mm -hmm. so I could play with my voice. But very similar situation. That's amazing. That's amazing. Oh, look at those. So this yeah. is this is you. Yeah, this is me and my sister. Oh, man. And uh, these, uh, so the first, the picture with the the, the X-Wing fighter and the, the TIE fighter as my first Christmas time with Star Wars toys. Oh, man. So very I wake cool. up pretty early and the guinea pig behind, uh, it was very pissed off actually because I wake <laughs> up too early to pick up my toys. I was in the stage. <laughs> what the hell are you waking up so early for? Yeah. And uh, I was so happy about that. And actually, the uh, the reason why I have the, the, the Pali toy, Star Wars X-Wing fighter without light and sound, it's because my dad came back from uh, from England. I had I was lucky enough to get my dad traveling uh, for his job uh, all around the, the world and especially in Europe. So most of the things we could not get in France, he he bought it in uh, in England, Germany, or, or Belgium, which is to me as a kid that those countries sounds like wonderland because they get everything we haven't got back home. <laughs> right. That's what a cool dad to get that stuff for you. Oh yeah, it was so pretty. like the land of the Jawas, for example. The, yeah, uh, that was back in 1981. This one, and uh, we never had it back home. So when you bring it from England, and also I was so now I'm very happy. I still have it actually, and oh. uh, I love it. And it's also different from the the US one. The the the, the plan shape with the the, the cardboard is uh, it's not a, a plastic injection one. It's uh, a vacuum form uh, mold, actually, so it's uh, a cheaper version because they. Yeah, it looks a little different. Cheaper. Yeah. It doesn't look like it's got the cave in it, or does it? I just. Can't yeah, see. and no escape pod as well. So. Okay. They, but you had a Jawa actually sold out with it, right. and some uh, extra. Oh, that's cool. It comes with a figure. Yeah. John Francois, let me ask you something real quick. Yeah. I'm real curious about this. I've never really asked anybody this question. Um, so. Obviously, there were certain toys, like, for example, the American-made um, vintage Death Star. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's completely different, obviously, than mm -hmm. the ones that were made in Europe and whatnot. What, what goes into that when it comes to, like, does Kenner, is that like an old Kenner deal? Or do does that toy manufacturer in, in the, the other states go into manufacturing? Because, like, for example, I've got right here the, the yeah. version. Yeah, you know, well, I can I can amazing. show you mine. Uh, actually, right, I still have it right here. That's cool. Uh, one of those boxes here. That's the one I have from the childhood. I had it in Christmas in 1980. Oh wow! I mean, I'm gonna put you on solo mode. Oh so that's wow! Yeah, the, uh, the Man, that one's clean. clean. I I have one in the in the the other writing. Wow. And uh, many years later, I bought the uh, the Palitoy version. Yeah, that's the one I have, I think. That's the one you had, which is basically the toy. It's the very same as Palitoy. It's just the packaging yep. change. Yeah. Uh, that's the one you're more familiar with. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. 
Wow, that is cool. I love that Death Star. That the, the gentleman I got this from, his name is John. He, he it's it's mint. It had the stormtroopers and the, the rifles were still in their little packages. It's probably the cleanest one I've seen. Uh, this one I, I've been destroying the Death Star a hundred times because it was one of the most uh, funny places that I had had. And yeah. uh, th this toy was very easy to find actually in France for oh, yeah. a couple of years uh, from 1980 to 1982, basically. And uh, yeah, so much fun with that Death Star, cardboard Death Star. We have so much fun with it. It's and it was so also, valuable. yeah, it is actually. You, I, I think it's Canada who had the, uh, the, this is the only country in the world who you have both. You have the Canon one and you had the, it was Sears actually. Uh, can Sears Canada, who was sold out for one of the Christmas, the actual um, Palitoy Dead Star. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. There was also in Australia and with the tortoise packaging and New Zealand, that, that Dead Star was also available in, the, in that part of the world. Wow. Yeah, that was one of my, head, I was headhunting this and finally when I found this and then made a really good friend from it, but I, I love that thing. And it's, it's, even though it's all cardboard, yeah, it, it, you could it play if you if you're a little kid and playing. Yeah, mm -hmm. compared to, to the the one I have up here on top, it, yeah. it it's got like more stuff to do with it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I do. I do. It's, it, we have so much. We have some friends coming home. We this is the the, the actual place that we play the most with. Yeah. And, uh, many years later, is when I start to collect, I really wanted to have the the Kenner one because I always seen on catalogs and i was wondering why it was such a difference between the this the place at, in america and the place at, in europe and i was yeah. so pleased to, to receive my dead star from uh, from america yeah. and back in 92 something like that when i was yeah. starting collecting so i was i'm happy i have both actually so For i sure. made a video about that i compare both of them yeah and i i love those toys definitely that's gabe, awesome. gabe that thing goes clean for over five grand wow wow yeah. Man, oh <laughs> cool. I've got some of those these here. Let's look at this. Ah, so th this one is very special. Even it doesn't mention anything special. It's my first mail I received from Kenner when I started back collecting because when I, as a child, I bought toys, I get toys. I didn't need to ask my parents for Christmas or birthday. They knew what to buy, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. And, uh, during the teenage times, I was doing something else. So I left my toys on the side for a while. But when I, the age of 18, 19 years old, I, I put back my, my toys on the shelf in my bedroom. And I, and I wanted to, to complete my collection whatsoever. Why I decided that, I don't know why exactly. Perhaps because of frustration, I never have all the toys. And yeah. I felt like, okay, let's try to find a way to get it complete. Mm -hmm. And back home, back in 1988, 1989, it was like walking through a desert. You have nothing available. I used to go to the old toy shop. I used to go when I was a kid. They have like a couple of uh, tri-logo wicket or uh, it's always the same character was available. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Four left and uh, one Ewok catapult. Which is okay, that's, this is not what I want. <laughs> and uh, I thought, okay, I... Just grabbed one of the old car back from my dad, bringing from uh, from uh, from America, and I decided to write. Or actually, he helped me to write because at the time I was not able to to speak English or to write in English. So I was written my my uh, my uh, letter in in French first, and then we translate. I rewrite uh, the the letter in uh, in English, and we send it. And at the time, it was no internet, so you have to wait like two three weeks to get an answer. Yeah. So when I received that letter, I was so happy and I stopped to read. So it was like, sorry, sorry, man, you came too late. There's no, yeah. nothing available. Please write to Tonka in, in England. They might have some stuff because back in 1989, it was Tonka who was in charge of what was left from Palitoy because Palitoy shut down his factory in 1984, 1985. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and Tonka was the, the owner of Kenner and all the, uh, the brand all around the world for, uh, for Kenner. And I received the same letter from Tonka, said, why don't you write to America? They might be have some toys for you. <laughs> and I said, okay, no, you, you, you just send the same mail to me and uh, mail after mail, nothing. I, 
I think I also found the address of the Banta track in California. It was back in 1990, but I have a return to sender envelope with my $5 bill inside. They said, sorry, this, not, nobody lived there anymore. And what saved me is uh, I bought a, um, a model kit for a Star Destroyer. Mm -hmm. It was a, um, a coupon for uh, get a subscription to the uh, Lucasfilm Fan Club. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. And that was back in, that's it, that's the one. And that was, give me some hope actually, because then I received my first uh, magazines and inside, uh, still have to ask my dad to, to read for me, but we found a guy in Kentucky. He got his catalog called SOS Star Wars. So that was back spring 1990. Mm -hmm. And Steve Denny, thanks to him so much because my collection will never be the same without him. And uh, this is how I start to get all my loose figures missing for Empire Strikes Back, like four LOM, Best Pin Black, and uh, the Cloud Cow Pilot. Those three figures was never sold out, never released in France. Wow. So I was so happy to get them for a couple of bucks. And a Dewback as well, because the Dewback was never released too. Wow. And, and this is how it started, you know. And uh, then thanks to that, magazine because I, I could get a lot of contact that afterwards and to to complete my collection yeah that's gabe has a similar story that he he wrote into george lucas like you know that's what's so crazy because you're one of the lucky ones john francois because mm -hmm. you know me and gabe have talked about this in the past especially for us vintage folk mm -hmm. you know there's some people that that are into toys right and then when they start you know getting into adolescence here 14 or 15 or 17 or 18 you were almost out but then you came back in but yeah. there's so many people that just lose that they're just not interested in toys anymore and i i feel like we're when on the outside they look at us like we're crazy but yeah when we can live into our childhood and still continue to like what life is all about which is the toys and you know and mm. and that feeling and so many people just don't have that and you kept it going all the way through. You're you're one of the faithfuls, is what I'm getting at. <laughs> yeah, I'm one of those guys, and Gabe's one. You know. So John Francois. So after that, you started going to these conventions and and yeah. starting to figure out the yeah, yeah. community of people. yeah. When I, when I start to feel more, um, when it was more easy for me to speak English, I start to went to to the UK because it was at the time the only place in Europe where you can really have uh, true passion people about Star Wars also because they, they have the L Street studio where the, the film was shot. Yeah. And so my first uh, convention was in November uh, 13, 1994. And uh, that's the first time I met some movie actors for, from Star Wars, Dave Prowse for Darth Vader or uh, Mike Kenman who play um, some uh, Ewok. And then I used to go from 1994 to 97, 97 twice a year with my car, was driving like four or five hours, wake up at 3 a.m. in the morning with some a couple of friends. We drove to England. At the time, we have to take the boat and uh, and we, meet the, we met the actors and we bought some toys and coming back home at 3 a.m. the day after. It was like a crazy 24 hours for Star Wars <laughs> twice a year. But it was so much fun. It was so cool to meet all those guys. And they, they, that's they, incredible. They, that's having, so having a Stuart picture with Stuart Freeborn and his wife. Oh, man, that, that one. I mean, that's back in 97 with Kay and Stuart when they, they start to explain to you what they were doing, how they, especially Stuart, when he explained to you how he built Yoda, he sculpted his face and put yeah. some ears on. And I, I was like, it just for me, it was just amazing to listen to those people it was so cool to i was i feel lucky i met him basically because he oh was, that's a he very rare cool. rare autograph to have for damn sure you, hey, you know the story behind that gabe right with stuart freeborn no sorry no, okay so he he created the and sculpted the yeah. yoda and the, yeah. the chewbacca but um he used his own face yeah exactly yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. he's a mirror and he got it and then look and george lucas said yeah that's cool pretty cool let's do it yeah. <laughs> Just put some ears on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could see it. These guys always, John Francois, they, they always, uh, our group, our little like friends group, they always mm -hmm. joke around because they say that, because I, I say that I'm not a Yoda fan. Don't but... hang up, John Francois. <laughs> yeah, this guy, man, he's just lost his mind. <laughs> I like, yeah, but 
But yeah, I like the Empire stuff, which uh-huh. look at this. Empire Day. Ah, uh, yeah. The, this one was a very special day. It's yeah, uh, that's a nice costume for back in the day. Yeah, it was not expected at all because, uh, as usual, I come with some couple of friends. We drove, and this this year was uh, also special because it was the first time we could take the shuttle. So we have the tunnel to go to England. So it was like not an hour and a half to cross the channel, but like twenty five minutes by train. So you put your car in a train, in a special train, mm-hmm. and. In 25 minutes later, you're on the other side of the English Channel. You are reaching England. So it was so cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was also beginning of almost summer. It was a very sunny day, very nice. And when I came to the convention, the people started to know me and said, uh, we might have the right size of face for what we need today. So you won't queue with everybody. You come on backstage with us. I said, what? Me? Backstage? Yeah, come on. (laughs) So, okay. I followed the guys. And... uh, there was somebody with um who didn't want to wear the uh, the the uh, the imperial guard suit, but he was the only one with a small head to to fit to the helmet. Yeah, said, maybe Jean Francois can do it because I don't want to do it. Yeah, said, okay. I tried the helmet, didn't work. Okay. So I said, okay, well you were with us, never mind. But on the very bottom part of the backstage, it was one guy. He was way too big to get the stormtrooper suit. So there was two people trying to push him. Said, come on, it's gonna work, it's gonna work. It didn't work. And then they look at me and said, you, you're gonna be a stormtrooper. Me? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's so awesome. And so they, uh, they dress me. I have to go on stage for a rehearsal. I have no idea what they were playing to. And actually I started to understand they would try to do the uh, blockade runner attack to get the entrance uh, and it was in a big tier there was like perhaps two three thousand seats and it was sold out all all the place was sold out and the idea was to recreate the block and runner uh, attack with the rebel killed and then mm-hmm. with a big smoke you have all the uh peter mayhu dave prowls jeremy bullock were coming out and from on stage and uh, that was the kind of introduction for them to to ask christian to the uh, to the actors and I was just crazy because then I understand what it means to wear a mask. Yeah. And when you see absolutely nothing. <laughs> Do you think that was one of the real prop? Uh, no, no, no. They were they were they, they copy from the original one. Okay. That, 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 they yeah, were, that, those weren't readily available, you know. Yeah, you know, it was crazy because they haven't finished to paint it. This is why they on, on in the mouth all the the black part they weren't unpainted, mm. and uh, basically we were the one behind, and they have two clean costumes, and yeah. all the let's say av- average costume were on on the on the back on the back yeah. to to make troopers basically to yeah. to have some people on the stage, right. but to be with Peter Mayhew as a stormtrooper next to him like this, it was like oh wow, <laughs> that's yeah, something that's so cool. That's a great story. <laughs> yeah that is oh, so fun so fun so so then from from then i mean obviously you're a fan since since a, a kid um yeah. and then you you got into that um now as far as your collection you i we have some pictures you know of, of your collection did you have a focus or were you just trying to complete the night you know the 90 what is it 90 Three? 94? 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, 96, and there was one target was to get the uh, the, the canner because I, I I like the I like the, the Star Wars frame and yeah. the, the way the size also of it it's like the rectangular yeah. size I, I like it oh yeah it's the Revenge stories that <laughs> yeah. that's Steve Denny who, who who sold me those cards for uh, yeah a few a few boxes in in the very early nineties so when I asked Steve to get some. Um, we didn't know what it was at the, at the time. He called it blank card at the time. No proof. Those card. are originals? Yeah, they're all originals. Oh, wow. He got it from Kenner, and uh, he sold that f- to me for uh, $3 each. Oh, my <laughs> <the time>. God. <laughs> so uh, he just yeah. came in a conversation when I was writing an e- uh, um, a mail to him, said, look, I'm looking for... I didn't, we didn't use the term card back at the time, back in 1991 yeah. or something. I just wanted some 
figures packaging in. Uh, and he said, he sent one of the, of it. It was like, I think it was the, um, uh, the sand people or something like that. Mm -hmm. And he sent it to me in an envelope. And, uh, yeah. he said, this is, this is, this is what you want. He sent it for yeah. free. Oh my gosh. And I said, what? You get those kind of things. And I didn't understand why they have a square corner. Like, I, I, I don't understand what it was at the first yeah. time. Yeah. And, I, and I thought, yeah, if you have more, please. And then he started to send me, yeah, Revenge of the Jedi card and stuff oh like that. Gosh. Can uh, I see the back of that San Trinidad? Sorry? The Tuscan Raider. Can I see hit, hit the, yeah. the back of it? Wow. That's badass. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, what is the story about the on the bottom that the cards are, are cornered like that? On the bottom of the card, the actual yeah, how it's square on the bottom and rounded on the is that or basically because they were they, this is what we call the proof card, so they were just oh, okay. test, you know it's not yeah. like the original card for production yeah. like uh, I have a Greedo here. Actually, I have this Revenge of the Jedi Greedo. Oh, wow, and, it's a rare one. And and that. And this one next to it, it should. This is this one is the, a, a proper card for oh production. Also, that the thickness is different, mm. and the foot uh, the foot peg uh, hole is not the same as well. But this one was in the middle of the set of the cards, and uh, at the time we have so many of them, and uh, I was so so pleased to to get all those cards for. So, uh, do you have all of the collection of them, or are you you at, where are you at on those? I I finally get. Uh, uh, now, right now, I just have a few left because um, there was some part of my life I need to sold out a few things, unfortunately. Um, yeah. Even if Steve advised me at the time, never sold those things. <laughs> unfortunately, I, I need the money. Yeah. And uh, I kept some of them, but not all of them I had. I, I had like some 50 of cards, uh, wow. of cards, Empire and, and Jedi, uh, Revenge of the Jedi ones. But now I have just have like, 15 left <laughs> wow. but still i'm very happy i'm i'm lucky yeah. enough i really feel lucky i got those things anyway yeah so you still have all these revenge of the jedi cards these are the ones you kept yeah i kept and and then i i started also i met um uh, an, an ex a former employee from uh, from kenner uh, mm -hmm. tom naheizo who uh who is the guy who uh when he left kenner he left Kenner with five pickup of uh, archives who were supposed to be destroyed at the time. And because they knew that he, he liked Star Wars, said, why don't you come over with your, your pickup and uh, you have 48 hours to, to clean up the room. Wow. It's a huge storage place and you got so many artwork or packaging like the 12 inch Princess Leia, the best been gone, you know, boxes and all that kind of things. I could not buy it because it was a bit too expensive for me. And uh, I know some guys got it anyway. But uh, the, from him, I have s amazing stuff uh, still. I have, um, I'm going to show you that. That's fantastic. <laughs> it's right here. It's to me. You know, Jean, Jean Francois, we, we, we uh, as you know, we had Gus Lopez on. And yeah. the stories that he has about finding mm -hmm. like the rocket firing Boba Fett's and Oh, look at that. Wow. That's an unfinished. Holy crap, book. dude. That's badass. So wow. tell me, so I'm 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 ignorant when it comes okay, to it's a prototype. Yeah, it's tell a me what why it's is that a, a, a pre-production item, which is a, a first shot without painting. Yeah, uh, space so isn't painted and stuff. Yeah, right? And this is the uh the painted one. Yeah. And you recognize them because there are no pattern or COO printing on it. So the plastic is a bit loose somehow, but these are first shots basically to to say the okay we go for it we we go for production them, yeah. And this is uh, the kind of thing I got from uh, from Tom Naheisel. So I'm um, I feel blessed again to 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 have those kind of things. Yeah. And the other crazy stuff is this little box here. It doesn't yeah. sound. It's just like a um, a test. Uh, it's the, the regular figure. Of the hand solo trench coat which is oh, just yeah. the very same figure not nothing yeah. special but inside of it there's a small information oh wow. wow and nobody knows exactly what what it is i asked around salvador as well and he 
he asked me a couple of years to go to a, a Facebook group for uh, baggies, special baggies, and uh, they were amazed because nobody understand what it was. I believe it's just a test time, you know, where they have to choose which figure will become uh, offer for the year. Yes, As we know, in 1984, it's yeah. the emperor. So I believe they have a marketing session with several yes. figures like this. I said, okay, solo, emperor, wicked whatsoever, and they choose the emperor. So I believe it comes from a, a marketing test. Yeah. Solo was never released as a, as never, a mail order. Never. Yeah, I didn't think so. Wow. For many years, I thought it was um, a special offer, maybe released in some states, not all over America. You know, for many years, I thought it was so, but no, it's actually been, never been released as a, a special offer. Well, it's in good hands right now, John. Yeah. Oh, that's so awesome. Yeah. So let's let me bring up some of these because, okay. And then, so I, I've, yeah. I've seen these, but tell me why these are. Yes, yeah, the uh, the blue snaggle tooth. So the first blue, uh, I mean, the first snaggle tooth was blue, uh -huh. and because at the time Kenner just received a picture of the head, yeah. and they are very black and white, something like that. So they have no idea how was that figure. And actually, from the cantina, it was just a creature. You see it a couple of seconds in the movie, so yeah. there was no much reference at the time back in 1978 to really understand what was that figure mm -hmm. so as far as i understand when the blue snaggle tube was released with the uh, the cantina it was a sears exclusive actually in, in america cool. yep and uh, the, you, you can have it with the box or sold that with white boxes like this one you know because at the time um mm -hmm. if i understood right sears also sold out the figures without the play sets only mm -hmm. with the white boxes if you want it, you, for people who didn't want to play set, they can have the, uh, the 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 white boxes with the figures inside. I've never heard of that. Mm. Ah, okay. Never That's, heard of that. I, I don't remember who told me that story, but I found some magazine where you can see that on the old catalog, uh, the um, Sears catalog. Like by itself? Yeah. There's well, that, that thick, you know, they're very, very big. That yeah. you, you have the choice of the, uh, if you buy it with the, uh, the play set or without the play sets. Gotcha. Wow. That's and then why it become red? It's actually because actually Kenya get wrong a second time. Mm -hmm. uh, they receive a picture from the uh, Star Wars or the special, mm -hmm. and the, the shooting on the Star Wars or the special. They also just received the head, and they use I think it was a biker coat or something like that. And uh, so on the uh, actual packaging, the the picture you see, it's the uh, a, a picture shoot during the uh, the shooting of the. Uh, uh, 1978 uh, Star Wars really special. So you never had a proper picture for uh, <laughs> the Snuggle Truth, actually. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Wow. That's cool. And then ah, this one is special because uh, we never had it in France. Uh, the, a, um, the Droid Factory was just something we saw on catalog and, and it was not possible to get on retail store. And actually, the retailer they were very they were very unhappy as well because they have kids coming to them said why can't we get this thing and said sorry kids I can order it today or receive it in six months but I can't guarantee when I can receive it. No. We heard that phrase that sentence so many times uh, when we were kids, unfortunately. And uh, so one of the target when I started to collect in 1990 um, as a grown up was to have a, a proper droid factory with, with R2 in three legs. Yeah, that's cool. That was funny enough, that was probably the most important thing for me as a kid too, because I was like, he has a third leg. I want that. But as a kid, I remember there was a, a small toy shop and they had the droid factory, but it was a hundred dollars. And for me, a hundred I mean as a kid, there's no <laughs> way I could afford a hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I I would imagine i would dream at night that i would i would go in there and the shop owner says here you go you could just have the the little leg so i could put it in my r2 but it was a big deal for me too that, that mm -hmm. yeah, I, love, I love r2 and uh, it was yeah. i was so yeah, happy yeah, yeah. hey <laughs> there see there it is <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that was my first action figure was r2d2 uh -huh. that's cool 
So what is, what is this? It looks like a proof, like one of the... It's okay. a slide of uh, hard copies for the, um, the special um, Empire Strikes Back serial three figures. I think it was a hero set or something like that. Mm. And uh, Steve Denny who sent it to me. And it was something from the uh, the archives from uh, from Kenner as well. Mm. So I got a couple of... I have three of them, three of them like that. And uh, there was actually a proper slide... I think it's probably shot by um, Simon, I believe, because yeah, uh, the, the quality of those pictures, they are so amazing. Yeah. You can see that you, you, you feel like you hold the figures in your hand. It's yeah. just amazing. And uh, they are, to me, quite interesting because they are hard copies. Mm -hmm. You can see the way they are painted. It's not like the, the, the production items. You can see the, the shoes. You have the, the white stripes, which is we haven't got on the, the production uh, Items, so you can clearly see the difference compared. Also, Han Solo got the um, the brown color around his head, uh, which is white for the uh, the production figures, and uh, the uh, same way for the the Rebel soldier. He's got some extra paint we didn't have yeah, on their the legs. figures. Yeah, yeah their legs. Shoulder. Their legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a kid, I always I always thought about that that lightsaber, the Bespin. Luke lightsaber. I always yeah. thought, like, why did they make it yellow? Like, why yeah. it yellow? Right? Um, like, I know why. <laughs> do you know why? Why? I do. I do because uh, a month ago I was uh, doing my very first convention as an author, mm -hmm. and I was just sitting next to Jim Sherangian for three days. Mm -hmm. uh, so I asked him the I asked him the question why, and he said uh, just because we talk about toys, it does need to be exactly a pure copy from what you see in the movie and we have to do like one color for ben kenobi for Darth vader and for luke mm -hmm. so vader was red ben was blue and you had yellow for for luke and it's funny because if you talk about the 12 inch figures no. it's the other way around yeah luke has got the blue saber and yeah. ben's got the yellow saber yeah huh. it's just a matter to make differences exactly. between the toys because we talk about toys, we it's not like a, a proper replica like we have mm -hmm. today's where we saw accurate items. It's a different world. We talk about toys for kids when you got your own imagination and you develop the, the your yeah. own stories with your toys. So that's the, the way it was. That's interesting. Okay. Well, that's that's good for me to know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I actually talked to uh, John Francois. I talked to Jim and. I've got his cell number. We talked for a little while and he has agreed to be on the show. We just haven't yeah. pinpointed when to get him on, but considering uh -huh. we have you on, I'm going to try to get him on pretty quick. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, he's a super good dude. He's, he's an awesome guy. I was and so just, happy to, 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 to talk with him. And uh, yeah. I, I felt like, wow, I, I'm just talking to a legend. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's one of the original designers, Gabe. Yeah, if you he's the know. one who bring the, the license to to Kenner. You know, he's yeah. the one we believe in because he yeah. he's like us. He likes science fiction. He he like those kind of stuff. And uh, he's the one who said, "Look, we got to do it." You know, and this is yeah. his, his story is so amazing to me. So great. Thanks yeah. to him. Thanks. Cool. <laughs> thanks so much to, to to Jim for that. Well, I mean, thanks to him. I mean, obviously the the first right, the early bird set. So is this? Yeah. Is this your like you did you get that this or later as an adult or a later as an adult because we didn't have that kind of stuff back home at the time and um we uh I, it was something I target for many years yeah and uh, because I wanted for the book basically yeah. and uh, this is something was missing back in 2012 mm -hmm. because when I wanted to make the book uh it's actually what when I heard on the radio that Disney took over Lucasfilm you're like, mm. oh, that's something pop up in my mind. Said, I gotta do something. Yeah. I gotta do that book because I have it for so many years in my mind. Said, okay, let's do it now. So it was actually this story I heard on the radio, like mm -hmm. um, the, um, the Disney took over Lucasfilm, yeah. and then I start to make a big inventory of my collection, and I, I knew this was missing. And I said, if I want to make a book about Kenner toys, I must have a, an early bird. The early sure. bird, yeah. And uh, and also the uh, the envelope, you know, the uh, the early yeah. bird package. I must have both of them. Yeah. So I start to to look at, and it was back 2012, 2013 on eBay, mm -hmm. and I found one. I found one one guy in uh, in California who sold that pretty means, and a double telescopic. 
I said, that's the one I want. Yeah. And uh, it cost me quite a lot of money at the time. Yeah. Still much more today. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I was so happy I could actually uh, bought one. I said, okay, that's one of the piece. We said, that's it. Now I'm going to do the book. I have the early bird. Nice. John Francois, I want to tell you, um, so the gentleman that I got this Death Star back here yeah. from, he's a very uh, generous guy and we become really good friends, like I said, but I showed this to Gabe and uh, this was kind of heart wrenching, but he sent me this. Uh, hopefully it won't fall apart, but uh, this collector deal and during shipping, you can see the piece. Oh my God. Going. Oh no. Yeah. So I need a box for it. You know, a mailer, a mailer box. Right yeah, here. I see. And yeah. um, I need a, you know, this top piece. So, oh, yeah, yeah, I it, it it's it's so brittle. It just yeah. fell into a, a a bunch of pieces. But uh, the Luke, it was really cool because this Luke, I mean, it's just it's Perfect. sad that it's fallen such a part, but. It's got the double telescoping. Loop. The double telescopic one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think... Um, oh, wow. But it's such a... You see how brittle this thing is? And yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. sad to see that, isn't it? Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just now opening this up, it's just falling out in shambles. <laughs> so it's like, shit. It's a very fragile item. And, uh, yeah. I, was, I feel lucky he crossed the Atlantic without damaging. Yeah, for sure. I, I had one... Uh, it happened once with a Darth Vader... Mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, it was a 12 back. I was looking for it for so long, and uh, the guy just did a, such a narrow, small boxes. Yeah, it came to me. That better cross over the the bubble, oh, so yeah. like, the, the head was coming up from the the blister. Oh. And I said, oh, come on! And I send him back. I, I get I get payback hopefully, and I couldn't find another one on eBay. But I was so pissed off when I found. You know, I, I don't get I, that for so long. You know. I don't get John Francois how all these people send in these things to the the grading. Mm -hmm. It's such a risky thing, you know, that yeah. you're they're sending vinyl cake Jawas and yeah. and uh, a friend of mine has a double telescoping Vader that mm -hmm. he sent in to get graded, and it's so sketchy when you do that, you know. Yeah, yeah. it's tricky. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. Sketchy, so, so these are just a couple more of those proof cards that you yeah, know, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. This Empire, the Empire, this the uh, early figures, and uh, with the Empire Strikes Back logo. So, yeah, yeah this the very very nice items actually. Yeah, very hard to find yeah. those Star Wars versions in Empire Return. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. right. Okay. Um, so then you started. Obviously, you said 2012. You started kind of conceptualizing the book right yeah. and you said you wanted to to make this book mm -hmm. um, so i'm going to bring up some of the the images here that you you sent us <laughs> yeah so tell us about that process and kind of how yeah. how it all started when i have the the i really decided to do it i i have to figure out what kind of things i will show yeah. and so because i didn't want to show everything and the target was showing items as seen in the star wars trilogy the original trilogy which is like uh, no plush or toothbrush you know not that thing just action figures play sets and vehicles mm -hmm. this is what i wanted no no mini rigs because they were off screen you know i just did the exception for the droid factory because of the r2 free legs and the um, imperial trans troop transporter because you have the sound system and you can hear the sounds of the um uh, of the film, but I really wanted to get a topic. When then I get that target on, I said, "Okay, let's see what's missing for figures, play sets, and mint condition." Because my idea was to, from the very beginning, to have like kind of blueprint presentation layout, page layout, where you can see brand new figures or vehicles and play set, and next to it the actual figures loose with some measurements uh, to, for people to understand what was the size of it because we talk about things now nearly 45 50 years old nearly and uh, i believe it was quite interesting for people to understand the proportion of the items and also from the very beginning i wanted to 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 make some volume about the picture like 
I mean, when I ticking the eight the at, at boxes, I wanted to see on the sides. That way you can see how thick was the boxes. Mm -hmm. And doing the same also for the figures. Like I wanted to have some kind of angle that way. That way you mm -hmm. can see the, the side of the bubble and also the the frame, how big it was. That's the, the only thing. So I start to sketch, drawing quite a lot of things mm -hmm. and uh, thinking how to get more information about the, the production. How was the, ind the industry was working at the time, to collect information for the Hong Kong system, how they were understanding the, the, the process of work, because I, I, I don't have all this information back in 2012. So mm -hmm. I started to check on the web and even read articles from the, the Washington Post and stuff like that at Christmas time, if can you have some issue to deliver toys. Like I found some stories with the Cincinnati Inquirer when they, they found a journalist found a story like uh, for Christmas 1978, they have some difficulties to to get R2D to the remote control one. It was very popular at the time. It was a top sell. And unfortunately, they have some issue to get uh, the um, electronic device from Taiwan. Mm. It was already some kind of problem at that time. Mm. And so when like a, sh a store order 80 R2-D2, they just received 16 R2-D2 and sold out in a day. Yeah. And then people start to get very unhappy about that because, they say, oh, well, you promised a lot of toys. It's been already a year we're waiting for it because already Christmas 77, people were waiting for toys. And then right, right. back in 78, they start to get also some issues to, to deliver toys sometimes. And so all these kind of stories, I, it helped me to, to, to set between the picture because you need to see the book, not just a big catalog, but also the stories behind. And this is what I wanted to set on the, on the book. So it took me like finishing the collection, get the information and um, something like until 2017, basically. So five years of making a huge inventory, get all the story I want. And back in, in, in spring 7, 17, 2017, I make the picture, the one you, you saw, it's part of it. And doing the frame layout, putting on the, the wall of my living room, which is my wife was very pissed off about. <laughs> that is so awesome. Yeah. And that's the entire book. It's a storyboard. <laughs> exactly. It's exactly like a storyboard. You, yeah. You're right. It's just yeah. like a storyboard. And uh, then I can check if things went wrong or, or good or it should follow that way and also the idea of the blueprint keep him from the very beginning because it's blue like the, the kino logo yeah and also like a uh, evil coyote and the evil road runner you know i was yeah. thinking of one acme i always have the the coyote try to sketch you know i, I got this blueprint in my mind <laughs> that's hilarious and and i wanted to to add it because the the, the proper blueprint uh from the 70s they are white and black actually then they're, they're no blue anymore so the small it looks fantastic design. and then <laughs> it, was before, it was it was you didn't it was before what do you call them qr codes what do you call those yeah yeah that the qr code i didn't have the idea yet because yes yeah. at the time i was setting my my frame and i proposed that job to a publisher uh it was the third one in france in terms of market very a very big one and they saw the book said oh yeah we want to do it so they went to disney Mm. It was the fall uh, 2017, and at the time, Disney was not interested because not about the project itself, but Disney likes when a publisher comes to him, it comes with at least five, ten projects, not just one. Wow. No matter what the project you bring, you have to bring a lot. Mm. So this is how I figure out, said, okay, uh, I try other, other couple of publishers, they were not interested as well. So I said, okay, I got to do it by myself. Because mm -hmm. the, the, the first publisher I met said, you got a great book, you got something good. You, you try to do it by yourself because I'm pretty sure you got some fans that they will like it. Yeah. Said, okay, so let's do it. At that time, it was only written in French. And I really felt like, to sell it on, only on the French market because the idea behind was to explain the U.S. market to the French people. Understand? I, there's so many books already done by Steve Sansweet or stuff like that, so nobody in America would be interested about that. Yeah. And I was completely wrong because wrong. Yeah. <laughs> when I start to publish on uh, Facebook, this is when I start to get uh, used with the uh, social mm -hmm. networks. So that's fall seventeen. 
I received many messages. And, oh, yeah, I'd like to have it in English. Really? So, okay. So I started to write in English as well. So I was doing that during the weekends, during the late evening and stuff like that. And in also in 2017, I did for nine weekends, 3,000 pictures. Wow. So it was like 10, 15 hours every weekend. But I did all the pictures. And then I knew I have the picture. That's it. That's the, the, the time that the, I put out everything out of the boxes. And uh, I, I make the, the, the picture for the book. That is so exciting seeing these pictures. So many people, people watching this show right now, John Francois, that are into vintage. Oh, my gosh. I, this is the stuff that is so exciting to see, you know. This yeah, is, this is yeah. major. It's 35, 35, 40 years of collection, basically. Yeah. Step by, you know, step by step, brick by bricks, uh, brick, and I and I build this collection. And, yeah, in 30, yeah, 40 years, something like that now. Yeah. yeah. I just, it looks beautiful i mean these images always are always going to bring out so much emotion right Big for star time. wars fans just because like it throws you back to your childhood like it really does Big and, time. Yeah. Yeah. so that um, yeah 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 and then because i could not find a way to make the book i stopped uh, put the book on the side for a while and i started to figure out to do the videos yeah so now we're back in 2000 2018 basically and uh, I start to set uh, Chronic Vintage, my YouTube channel, and uh, with the early um, early videos. And the idea was like, okay, let's show because I'm lucky enough to have everything brand new. Yeah. So let's display it as new and used condition. Let's set the um, the, the the videos, and yeah. then let's do the QR code for the book. Wow, that's awesome. And let's let's show some of these videos because you said you sent some of them yeah. over. And uh, let me uh, see if I can. Let's do which should we do? The first one should we do the the one for the video should be number three, I think, because the first one. Yep, yeah, there it is. All right, let me let me find it. Is it that one? No, sorry, <laughs> I got the wrong the wrong one. Hold on. Maybe it should be that one. It's the Chronic Vintage Le Video. Okay, don't make me start playing music. <laughs> <laughs> is, there it is. Okay. Good yeah. guitar player. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like it. Yeah, that's the one. So I was doing storyboard, basically. <laughs> and uh, using, uh, yeah, the uh, instruction sheet was actually a lot of information mm -hmm. to start to set the, the, the proper shooting position. And uh, then I start to make my own studio. Uh, so um, that's the idea behind it's to create something without a corner, you know, when you do shooting. Yeah. That way you have a nice blue background and uh, starting to, to set the, the, the boxes and uh, to have the lights on and to put the camera in the right position and starting to make the, um, the proper shots for, uh, for the videos. That's unbelievable. So, so you might have mentioned this a little bit. So... Did you so you went and put this whole collection together? To oh, yeah, this one is all the shooting missing actually. It was a hell of a problem to try to grab Greedo on the right position, <laughs> and this one I, it almost fell out. Oh, shit. So, oh, no. oh, 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 God. <laughs> look at all the 12 backs! Oh my yeah, god, that's really the time to shoot on the 12 back. Is that a vinyl cape Java, a real one? Yeah, yeah, holy cow, that's awesome. A real one. I know that stupid question. Yeah, that's this this one. <laughs> yeah. well, I'll show you later on. Yeah, and then so I have to record in French and in English, and doing the the um, the green screen, added the figures or whatever behind, and do doing all this. Uh, it's also uh, interesting for me to learn to use all the uh, editing software from Adobe and the Premiere and also the. Uh, in design or after effects that was so cool to learn the, how to use the software for creating all this stuff basically your background colors are you're staying vintage they're fantastic yeah. i really want to have it yeah. oh, that sound really throws me back to my childhood oh, man that is so exciting yeah. um so so john francois this is this is great for seeing because obviously as you may know you know the last two years 
kind of the, the YouTube community for Star mm -hmm. Wars just kind of blew up, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of people are sharing information, including us, right? I mean, that's what we do. We, we mm -hmm. stream on YouTube. So this is great because, I mean, you you figured out a, a, an avenue, some a way to be able to, you know, to explain this and educate people. Mm -hmm. And that's just amazing. Um, and you, so your channel, remind the viewers what the channel is. It is chronic vintage, so chronic, uh, chronic vintage, uh, right. uh, yeah, chronic vintage, and also chronicvintage.com. That's my website where you can buy the, the book the, directly. Perfect. And you, you're right because my main target was to to display the toys for collectors. There's some parts missing, like you go to eBay, you, you can't, you're not sure if like your million yeah. falcon, there's some part missing. Now, that with those videos and the book, you can actually see every part. That way, you can complete your your missing parts if something is missing actually Love and this that. is the one to target and the videos took me like yeah more than two years yeah like 160 videos basically wow. and uh, when the videos were finished we had the pandemic coming through mm. and uh, um i lost my job i didn't have any more work to do and I went back to school to learn web design and to do um, layout for for books. And they said you must come with a project. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> I <Yeah>. got one. <laughs> and I said this is now or never. Let's do it. And so I learned how to do um, a book layout with uh, Adobe InDesign and uh, recreate. And I just like for each figures, you know, to to detour everything with Photoshop. Mm -hmm. yeah. All those pictures, it took me weeks of works, but I said, I'll do it now. It's no more. I just, no more. It was reaching a point of no returns, you know. Yeah. It was narrow, never. It was so much in my mind for so many years. I said, that's it. Let's do it. I have no job. I went back to school for that. Yeah. Do it. And so that was back in 2021. And then I did the, uh, for summer 21, I started the Kickstarter because I need the money for uh, printing the book. That was the, the missing part, basically. Okay. But so, yeah, yeah, it was let done. Play, let me play some of these other videos. So um, mm -hmm. which one should I? Um, uh, you can try number four, maybe should be the Kickstarter. Yeah, you can Kickstarter. try Kickstarter, yeah. Perfect, all right, so let's play that one. This is a journey in the world of toys, a story of success who've changed the industry forever and become a legend today. Year by year, each page will tell you what you want to know about Kenner legendary toy line. By scanning the QR code, you will be able to watch every item in movement to complete your experience with vintage Star Wars stories. All major action figures evolution is referenced in this 240 page book with more than 800 high resolution picture and all packaging picture variation like Boba Fett figure or vehicle like X-Wing fighter. From early bird to Tatooine skiff, all action figures, play sets, and spaceships as seen in Star Wars original trilogy are available in this book, the 1978-1985 Kenner Toy Line book. That's that is man. Awesome. Yeah. Josh, well, I, I know we're we're not done, but I I just have to say a, a, a gigantic congratulations for all of the the work that's involved in, and that's a shit ton of labor time, you know, and, and I, I have pretty much every book from Gus Lopez to San Suite to other people out there. And hands down, I haven't seen, I can't wait to get my copy, but I, I will tell you, I've never seen anything like that. That's very, very exciting for the vintage collector. It's really, Thank you. really cool. Thank yeah. you so much. Gabe, yeah. I mean, that just the way it's shot, it's so exciting. It's like, I can't believe that's available. I've you know? never seen I've never seen an interactive yeah. book like that. And the fact that you could look at this image and then go and watch the video of it in action is just like 
Oh, I, I love it. You need an agent is what you need. <laughs> Holy shit. I mean, I'm serious. This is something that Disney could really, I know, I know how, how you do private and, but man, this is just fantastic. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. I really want to to carry on, and it will be next project. I don't know yet what it will be, but uh, I still I have a few things in my mind. Yeah. But uh, this is the the amazing part today. We we have the software, we have the tools, uh, we can do pretty much what we want. And this is perhaps what I was dreaming about thirty years ago when I started collecting. Mm -hmm. Having something in back in my mind. I remember when um, when I get involved with Steve Dini and Tom Nahaisel. I send them some um, some pictures of my collection. and uh, But I just have a typewriter. I uh, didn't have any computer. And yeah. uh, I just do it, everything by hand, glue the, the picture on the, <laughs> on, the, on, the, on the sheet paper and, and send them like a, you know, with some uh, stiper on the, on the side and uh, like making a very uh, early book, basically, about what was the French market and what was my collection look like at the time. Yeah. So well, I have that, that in my mind for many years, basically. Well, speaking of, should I show the video of, of the collection from? Yeah, you think the, that's the next one should be uh, when the printer sent me the very early uh, videos of the uh, the first pages printed, actually. Okay. I think it should be number five. So it could be imprimeur. So that would be the word in French for printer. Let me bring that up real quick. Zero five. First book delivery, that one? First delivery, it's actually the first time. In, it was in March this year when I received the first book. So that, so that was the one just before, I believe. Yeah. Oh, there's a, a different one. Okay, let me, let me find that one really quick. Sorry. Yeah. Well, he's looking for that, John Francois. What was it like to be sitting next to uh, Swearingen um, and he sees like absolutely hands down to date one of the best reference vintage he, books today he, liked it. He, he he did the honor to told me uh he was uh impressed about the, the the job done and he also he was also impressed about the the reaction of people because every time somebody come to to buy a book when they found about the qr code they was like okay i buy it <laughs> yeah it's crazy then, so they they bought they bought the book they asked me to sign it and then they go to see Jim to sign the book. Yeah. So I was like, <laughs> well, just living a dream, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Number five. Witness of that. I never thought I would be witness of this thing, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. So I have one through five. Uh, number five is the one that's that. Um... Okay, so let's go for this one. Okay. Let's, let me bring that in. That's the one when, the, the, yeah, that's the last March, end of March this year. So this uh, a lot of emotion because I that's the first contact with the book. Is that your wife videoing? Yeah, yeah. She she grabbed the video. I said you have to film that because this very moment this is when I put my hand for the very first time on the book. Um, so yeah, that that was something. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. That's so cool. Now you can see everything in the, 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 the references when all the people was part of the Kickstarter. Gut and Duncan. Forward. Yeah. We need to have him on, Gabe. Okay. And this is also the story of Bernard Lumi. This is uh, Jim Chantinki who, who made the Bernard Lumi and James for Engine story. Yeah. And then become the first toys. <laughs> And the, the layout and uh, I redraw every weapon to have look like um, it will be like a white printing. I, I draw like for two every weapon. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> so I make the test of the QR code again. Cool. Ah, yeah, and a double page for the big vehicle, like a million falcon and at at and the imperial shuttle. They're here. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's so cool. 
Congratulations, man. Yeah, I mean that that must have been such a uh, I mean amazing moment. The release a big one because they they're supposed to be ready for October last year, October twenty one. Mm -hmm. there, will be, there was so much trouble with the printer. Uh, they have um, room material uh, issues. They could not uh, deliver on time. I mean, because the, the price of the room material raised up by, uh, for transportation raised up by 10. Yeah. Like it cost, you know, one container price was like $1,200. Mm -hmm. Become to $12,000 for one container to be yeah, sent away to Europe. See, which is like, in, so they have to wait not one or two weeks, but two months yeah. to get the stuff. And then they have issue to finally get the book done as it was expected. And they, um, the price change as well. I have to pay 20% more. Yeah. And, and this is Jim and I. <laughs> on the, so would the, you use that same publisher again or no? Printer? I don't know because they did a good job. The book is in good in good. With good good quality, but the management yeah. around was a bit of an issue, I have to say, because yeah. from well, October 2021, they yeah. came in March 2022. Yeah, and were patient enough to wait for their copy, and I was like getting crazy. Uh, in January, end of January, the book was still not printed. Yeah, now I was keep going announced the book will come, and. Uh, at that time, I felt like we reached a point of no return and something needs to be done. And I said, sorry, uh, we can't deliver the book on time as we expected. It can be only in March, end of March. I said, what? You ask me to wait another two months? Yeah, and then you got people that have backed the book and you got to let them know the, the whole thing. Yeah, time. exactly. Yeah, that's and Everybody great. went back and said, no worries, take your time. I said, really? Yeah, said, wow. Yeah, they, the, welcome I mean, to the Star Wars community. That's how. They yeah, are. they were so nice. Thank you, guys. If you watch that program, thank you again for to be so patient and to be so supportive to the project. Because, wow, there was some moment I was really feeling bad because <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. saying something here, upcoming. And here you are. I mean, th this yeah. is such an amazing journey. Yeah, um, oh, yeah. It really yeah. is, Gabe. Yeah, because I, the thing is, when uh, when I met Jim in in Germany last month. Uh, so it was back in June this year. Uh, I sent an email to uh, to the guys in charge of the, uh, of the the convention in Germany, and uh, he said, "Yeah, we have one space free next to Jim Engine. Why don't you come over?" <laughs> sure. said, well, of course, I am. I'm, I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> I can do. I can. I can wait, and I can. I have to find a way. I said to my wife, "Sorry, I won't be there in the middle of September for three days. I have to go." <laughs> I can. I mean, he bought the book. He likes it, and yeah, I mean, sell some of them. And I kind of, I want to show just really quick because I know we have a, a couple of videos that, that just almost because it's it, you documented this journey because mm -hmm. you really did because so you have for example right your your collection you documented oh. your collection mm -hmm. you know as you had it displayed and then how it progressed and then yeah. to where you're at now to the book so I wanted to show. Because this is what we do, right? We document our collections. That, that video is completely crazy because it's not supposed to be here today. I, uh, it was one of my dad's friends came with his camcorder at the time, back in 1989. And that's my bedroom. Wow. And I grabbed a VH, uh, VHS and I I just did a couple of shots. With, uh, and, look how you painted the walls and stuff. That's awesome. <laughs> And they were it reminds like, me of you, Gabe, yeah. and your, your little pictures. And this is where, when I set my very first display by myself, creating with cardboards. And uh, it was the very early days when I put back all my toys out of the, uh, the boxes from the attic. Yeah, you're, you're, and put it back in my, uh, in my room. And uh, I found that video a few months ago, and I thought, I can't believe I did that. I, that you, is, you were you were born to do this, buddy. <laughs> that that was, I mean, what an amazing find! Like to have that. The, I mean, to think about that, right? Those to, are the coolest things ever, right? Like better than a vinyl Cape Jawa that you just purchased. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then obviously, what it, it kind of progressed to, right? Obviously. Oh yeah. yeah. It's a second step. 
A big Absolutely. shout out to your wife, John Francois. Yeah. Thank you, Dave. She's very supportive. <laughs> yes, they are. Yeah, that's back in uh, 2000, I think. And uh, when I was starting, it's the, the day I received my uh, star cases. Wow, look at that. Yeah. That's a nice one, man. Yeah. It's starting to change color, actually, the, the vinyl cake now. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's some kind of different color now. Yeah, I'll show you later on. Yeah, this is a small plexiglass I was cutting um, to display uh, a while ago. And it was like a lot of rub down and sanding to um, to have it clean. You know, like a little crystal to put special figures on. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. What are those little crystal pieces for? I made it by myself. Oh, that's cool. Just a nice little display. Those yeah. are like the, the special figures. Those are the ones that you told me you couldn't get here in France, right? You had to get them yeah. out of the States. So those are special to you. Yeah, exactly. And also oh, yeah. because they got the blue snaggle too for a look with different color, hair color and stuff like that. So I was building those kind of little crystal yeah. and put it on and put some letters on it and to to explain like uh, like in a museum To I have it back here, actually. I can try to show you better. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But for the, uh, I will do for the... Uh, Stormtrooper, <laughs> look Stormtrooper. That's a real rare one, the Luke Stormtrooper game. Yeah, it's got the removable helmet. Yeah. So that's the one I got it from Steve Denny back in '91, I think. So that's yeah. just the regular stuff. And what I did is I built this kind of stuff. Wow. And. Uh, Oh, it's got the little imprint for the the stand yeah, for the for standing the the helmet like this. Oh, very cool! Yeah, this one to get it clear. I mean, you need a lot of sanding rub down for quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> you did, or it? I did, right? <laughs> it was a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is. But I was younger, so I, I, yeah, I can't believe I built this kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Are you kidding? You look at that, look at that book. The book you did, holy cow. I know. I, and it's just beautiful. Um, I love, I just, I love what you did. And, yeah. and I, I love the fact that you did it differently, right? Because, yeah, yeah there, there's a lot of people documenting, you know, the, the figures, right? And there's there's information. But the fact that you took it a step further and, and to show them, right? Show mm -hmm. them kind of what's in the package, what's missing, what, what it's supposed to look like. And mm -hmm. then... Get to see them on video in action is just I, I love it. It's amazing. the best reference book, Star Wars vintage reference book to date. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I totally agree. Let me uh, so let me I'm gonna post your okay so your website um, right is chronicvintage.com and that's that's where you're gonna be able to to reach out the book. yeah. Yep. and find the book <laughs> i want to show i'm going to just go on the on the website um and here you're you're able to kind of you have all your links your facebook your twitter all yep. that stuff um your the gallery right where you could yeah, yeah. see you know some of these images it's beautiful beautiful mm -hmm. photography. that's the other thing i mean you you did the photography for all these. Yeah, that's cool. I thought the same yeah. thing, Gabe. That's, and they're beautiful. You did such a great job at these. I mean, yeah. these. thank you. Yeah, the lighting is great. I mean, the angles, I love, I love the angles. Because, you know, a lot of times you get just straight, straight mm. shots. I like the fact that you took, you know, some almost like artistic liberty, right? Almost mm. mimicking kind of the Kenner Style, yeah, right? yeah like, exactly. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. I got the inspiration from Kinner anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I really wanted to get the the idea. Ah, that's the one from Palitoy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the three uh, over different uh, playsets. Ah, uh, this one is also special. Yeah, yeah. This is um. If it was not all over America, this one it was uh, sending to the first sound born in 1977. For some families in in America, and to try to it's back in 1984, and because at at the time Kenner started to get a bit slow down. I mean, you got Master of the Universe metal was like 
punching through when we are a year behind Return of the Jedi. So right. it's to be the end of the era for Star Wars. And so Kenner tried to do a new promotion. And so they were sending one figures and posters and said, look for your firstborn son. He's six years old, so he's grown up. Uh, he's got the right age, basically, to, to play with Star Wars uh, figures and, and toys. But it's just, it was trying to to do the vibe, to wake up the vibe of Star Wars fan to a new generation of Star Wars fan to, to buy uh, toys, basically. Yeah. Man, that is so cool. Uh, yeah, this one I like because you see Yak face. <laughs> yeah, usually Gabe, those those two are blacked out. The the two, one and two, they're usually blacked out. Oh, are they? Yeah, you work, yeah, they work black out on the uh yeah, yeah. The 65 back, yeah, for the the early uh spring 1983. Yeah. It's funny all your knowledge now, right? You know more. I didn't know that. Yeah. So what, <laughs> what, what, what is the, the reasoning behind it? Just because it wasn't gonna be available, or why would they it was no, like I, I believe the part of the first line, the, 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 the I think the story behind it's because uh, when Kenner came to uh, to Lucasfilm to to propose the uh, the Clone War uh, vehicles or new generation uh, and said sorry, no more Star Wars, no more toys, and they said okay, so all part of the first line we have to scale down what needs to be sold out. And uh, the Boyak face were not sold out in America as um, um, the power of the force only in Canada when they have this uh, the figure coming out. So the the only uh, the, the power of the force uh, that's unbelievable two in two languages kind of through a lot of money right there, Gabe. That's yeah. unbelievable. The coin one I had the tri logo. Yeah, and the tri logo I have no weapon actually. Yeah. And, yeah, um, that's the one I bought in 1986. It's actually the, the very last figure I bought. I was uh, on holiday and I found it in a, um, in, a, in a small toy shop and they have the, this Yak Face figures. And oh, I ne never met that one because um, in in Europe uh, for the Tri logo, they, they kept the very same card back for the two generations for 1984 and 1985. Yeah. So this card back with all the 92 93 figures we never had it in europe uh -huh. so which mean like for many years or before i get a power of the force i never knew what was missing to my collection i never uh -huh. seen a man, a man for example or um uh han solo carbonite never saw it before and ev99 was to me completely unknown and i yeah. just discovered those guys back in 1990 when i started to, to wow. collect and before that, never, I never knew what was missing. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I was, uh, John Francois, I was talking to, when we had guests on the show, yeah. uh, Chris Lopez, we were talking about um, the Tri-Logo Yak Face that I had in the package. And I, we were told that, you know, it was a Canada piece. But yeah. I was it was before the cons and all that stuff and mm -hmm. eBay. And I didn't get mine from Canada. And when we talked... Um, it was, I, I heard that a few snuck through the KB toys. And yeah. I'm assuming that's where I end up getting, if you've heard of the KB toys here in the yeah, US. Yeah, I, I, I did. I did heard about that. There's some some extra sale from Europe, again, to, yep. to America. Yeah. For Anakin Skywalker as well. And yep. uh, for um, for Yak Face, this is our end up because uh, they didn't know what to do with the figures. Because yep. uh, especially in France, the, the moment where they have much, amount of toys was back in 1984 and 1985. There was no movies anymore. Yeah. And Meccano uh, decided to produce a huge amount of toys where kids were not interested about it anymore. <laughs> yeah. And when we were looking for toys, they didn't bring it <laughs> in yeah. 1980, 1982. That's a serious piece. That's a great piece. Yeah. Man. And all of your pieces are knit shape. <clears throat> condition I, I really fight for for that i really wanted to have uh i was not very keen to get like with uh a seal boxes for especially for the play sets and the vehicles yeah. because i wanted to have it clean yeah brand new but no need to get with the tapes on because the price was like <sighs> way too high for me to get like for um and the second picture of um for the million falcon for example uh with the best pin scene right if you seal it's like nearly three thousand dollars yeah 
no way no way and i've yeah. got one for uh 250 bucks back in 2014 pretty mint complete but with a nice picture so that's it that's what i need and uh for the droid factory those kind of things i i was looking for boxes open but mint that's what i was looking for and i save a lot of box uh because of that <laughs> so did gus lopez and uh duncan did they what was their role in this just inspiration did they what was yeah it? they were i mean gus is the first one who did um, a website of uh, the um reference is absolutely amazing and to me having gus and duncan as a, a forward uh, to me was very important because those guys mean a lot to to me there was a lot of inspiration because of their books they they, they made the before and uh when i accepted i was very very feeling lucky so happy yeah. about that so yeah they did a fantastic forwards in the book and uh we are we like the same things basically <laughs> They obviously had a lot of respect for you as well. And I'm yeah. sure Gus was pretty pleased with what he saw with this book. No, I'm, I'm so I'm so happy about what happening this past few months and uh, with Jim, Gus. Even also, I'd like to thank Ron Salvatore because he's the one who accept to to give inside the book some pictures about the uh, the, the three million dollar man. When I was starting in the book, explaining the story about Kenner, I need some illustration. I need some some picture, and um, I didn't have them. And I contacted Ron and said, "Yeah, sure, I, I'll give it to you if it's for your book." And I said, "Wow, that's so, yeah, that's so awesome. great, so great." There's also uh, Jeremy Siantinki. Was he? Um, he's um, a designer, a good graphic guy. Uh, he's the one who did the uh, the Bernalumi um, mm -hmm. illustration. Yeah. So if uh, Jeremy we look at it i would like to thank him again because he did such a great job about that he also helped me a lot with his wife in the english translation yeah. because uh the very first one i paid for was just uh something like he told me uh, do you know the inspector cluzo <laughs> and, uh, unfortunately yes <laughs> Say well, it's even worse than that. So please, please do not, do not, do not publish that thing. And uh, he said, okay. And he said, we're gonna, we're gonna help you. Yeah. And so kind, really. They, they did such a good job to to help me to to get a proper English version. Yeah. <laughs> and even Steve Sins, which bought one, so uh, I went. Yeah. yeah, and that's amazing. And again, I think what what you're doing kind of for for these these legacy right the legacy of the toys because here's the thing like to get into that hobby now it, it it's difficult now right it's not like it was in the 90s or you know even in the early 2000s um i and i'm a i'm a perfect example right i had my my vintage toys and i sold them a long time ago and then now that i want to get back into it it's it's almost impossible for me to do it just financially right because the yep. prices are so so what what advice would you give to someone who's inspired who watches you know your videos is inspired um and you know kind of wants to relive their their childhood through these vintage toys what, yep. what advice would you give well yeah like you said the money is an issue because uh everything is so expensive these days um i'm looking at the the boxes in in europe for example something like palitoy meccano it's like some of them are even six times more expensive than a kenner packaging for the very same figure mm -hmm. like for if you want a return of the jedi ben kenobi early spring 1983 a meccano one it's two or three thousand dollars just talk about a re-released re uh, figures and uh, I believe today for somebody who wants to start from scratch getting figures with uh, Return of the Jedi packaging is still possible to get some cool stuff yeah. but uh, if you don't have a huge amount of money like to get a um, Jawar vinyl cape and stuff like that it's pretty tough and uh, this is all one of the motivation I did that, those kind of things because for people who cannot afford uh, such a thing, they can have the whole collection in the book or watching yeah. the video. Of course, it's not the same that carry in your own hand the actual item. But today it's so expensive. It's definitely, uh, you can get still a few figures, play sets and vehicle 
hopefully. Yeah. But uh, to collect them all, like it is printing on the back of the card of the figures, yeah. you need a certain amount of budget to 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 get it. Unfortunately, yeah, that's the thing. That was a great question to John Francois Gabe, and I think to the collector just to having that book, like you just said, it's a great inspiration and a good start. Like what our show does for a lot of the viewers and the collectors out there, the ideas that we give them. But it's always exciting to have that that want and that book is a great reference to to just know that you know maybe i can't do it right now but you know in a couple months or you know when down the road i can but i think that's that's a well, great even, part. yeah i mean even just just right now watching the, the small clips that i watch like that like listening to to the um the snow speeder sound and just like <laughs> had to go throw one down real quick <laughs> <laughs> it really did. It like brought back emotions and it brought back these memories immediately. And I could I could feel it. Like I could feel it in my hand. I could feel pushing that little little square point <laughs> underneath, you know, like just watching that video. So I think as as Star Wars fan, as a community, obviously we thank you for for doing this and putting this out there and really um taking the time to you know, to share your collection and to put your toys. Honestly, a lot of collectors would not do that. They, they want to keep them pristine. They don't want to touch them. Yeah. You went and you broke, you know, you, you pushed the button to, to make them explode. You actually played with them for people to, to see. And I think that is beautiful and we appreciate it so much. Well, my, my pleasure. I'm so happy to share these days now. I'm 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 51. I think it's about time to to share stuff because for many years I was collecting on on my side, you know, like many yeah. collectors, and and um, I never thought to really share. But we have the technology for it as well, like what we do just now. We we chat from. I'm in France. You're in America, in different part of the states, and we can talk live, which is like wow it's just like amazing to me i remember just remember my very first fax machine i received i had in back in 91 <laughs> it was already a revolution because we didn't have to wait two weeks to have the mail back i remember that when i wrote to steve denny to his catalog i saw he got the um boba fett with star wars packaging so, oh my god i want to have that one the time to get the mail to him and coming back to me it was sold out <laughs> and I, <laughs> I bought it many years later, but uh, having a fax machine was already a big step in communication because you don't have to wait weeks, just a few minutes to have the answer back. Yeah, and uh, it was cheaper than calling, you know. And uh, yeah, and now we have live stream and just like we can share our passion all around the world. So that's, that's great, great. just yeah. lovely. Yeah, I thank you very much. I know it's it's getting late where where you're at, um, yeah, but I, I, I have a, a real quick question: Is yeah. it? Is, can you share with with the viewers um, some of your future projects? Or so you had mentioned earlier that you have an idea of something. Is it uh, another brand? And um, is it continuing with the Star Wars line? What, what's on your mind? Now I would like to carry on with Star Wars for um, maybe. Um, I don't know if it would be possible because it's just like something I have in my mind, and uh, I don't have any much poly toy items but i would like to do something very similar for poly toy because mm -hmm. the many toys were produced in the uk and uh, like the also the differences with the land of the jawars the dead star and uh, i'd like to to meet the guy who who met the um the actual dead star the design the english designer who uh, who worked for poly toy oh that's cool uh, I'd, I'd like to do that and uh to ask uh, there's already many videos about him but uh, like i did with jim i would like to do it with uh, brian yeah. and uh that would be fantastic if i have the time for it <laughs> and uh, that would be traveling in the uk and uh, go visiting people and taking picture of their collection like um because I don't have them as a um, like colored figures, for example. I, I just have a couple of cards back from my childhood when yeah. my yeah. dad coming back from uh, from England with it. But uh, yeah, that would be something I I would like I would like to do. And if I sold out what's left of it of the uh, one thousand five hundred book printed from last uh, spring, maybe try to find a way to to get it printed from America to sell more uh, for the. Uh, on the American continent, for example, that would be also easier than selling from Europe because the, the shipping is 
quite expensive these days. Yeah. So that will be also the continuity of this project, what I would like it, to do. It's so important to, to document. And it's something that Gabe and I are really blessed what we do in the community. And we do it quite a bit. And uh, we've got some more that, you know, I had mentioned having Jim Swearingen on. And, mm -hmm. and But these people are, aren't getting younger, right? And it's really cool to be able to document the yeah. stories behind the story almost of, you know, a lot of the stuff that's been done in the past. Because there's going to be a, a time that comes where, you know, Don Post is now a good friend of Gabe and I. And, and he just now texts, I'm sure, Gabe as well, mm -hmm. uh, you know. You know, it's really good to have these people archived, you yeah. know, on, on, on our show now because, you know, these stories can't be heard anywhere else. A lot of times. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, and it's, it, the, yeah. And again, now we're documenting this, right? This is going to mm -hmm. live on the Internet forever, right? So yeah. it's, it's amazing to, to kind of see that happening in real time, right? You're, everyone's yeah. watching history. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's really yeah. Cool. In the last year and a half, I've I've been able to watch Gabe go from dark hair to starting to get some gray hairs going. <laughs> <laughs> so he can go back in the old days. <laughs> I wanted I wanted to share something um, with you, uh, and yeah. it's it's something the, the only piece of French Star Wars collectible that oh. I that I have in my collection, and it's one of my favorite pieces. It sits. Mm -hmm. Basically, in in it's rare that my wife lets me put Star Wars stuff in the house. Everything has to be <laughs> this, one, this one thing I'm allowed to allowed to put on. And let me show you what I. Mm -hmm. I have. So my daughter is gonna. She's in the video, but I have the. Ah, right. Yeah. The yeah. French, yeah. Uh, Ewok adventure. Ewok coaster. <laughs> she's so beautiful. She. Yeah. Oh, there's a poster she's back so there. Cute. <laughs> And that's it. It's one. I love the French post. I collect French posters um, because All I right. love the scale of them. So I have a lot of the Hammer films, a lot of the vintage. All films, right, yeah. The French post because they're huge. They're they're over six by four feet tall. Yeah, I mean, they're, 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 cool. yeah. they're humongous. But yeah, I, I just wanted to share that. That's one of the centerpieece of my collection is a French poster. That's a pretty cool one. <laughs> I love how the card backs are done in French. How they're the short squatty card backs. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that. I, you know, um, when I was talking to David, it was funny because we there was he doesn't speak English well at all, you know. But he had somebody over there, you know, interpreting okay. what he was saying. But it was it was kind of funny. But he was showing me some of those card backs, and it's like, oh, I want that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Well, well, thank you so much again for for joining us. Um, for everybody that's watching, if you're interested in picking up a book, obviously go to uh, the website. It's on here. I'll also put a link in the description on the video. So you guys just click on that. You could order it there. Um, I know there's some U.S. retailers that are that, that are that are selling it. But, I mean, if, if you can, go get it directly uh, from uh Chronic, chronic Vintage, and, um, you know, that way you can get it. And all your videos are obviously on, on YouTube, right? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, make sure to subscribe there. Um, yeah, and thank you again so much. Michael, any final words? Just a, a, a big welcome to the Collection Wars family, um, John francois and a, a, a gigantic congratulations on, on something so difficult, you know, that you made – just fantastic. So thank you for sharing, you know, this time. And, and, and I'm really, really uh, glad to know you now. So me too. I'm very happy. I was part of the show. I was Absolutely. able to, to tell my, my story basically yes. plus the book. And uh, yeah. Um, thank you so much for inviting me for the, for the show. And uh, I'm pretty sure we'll, we'll do things together in, in the near future. <laughs> You're welcome back anytime. Absolutely. Thank you so much guys. All right. Thank you, everybody. Uh, and uh, we'll see you next week, everybody. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. You're all clear, kid. Now let's go.